everybody, and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name's Scott Kelby, and we have a very special guest in the studio today. It's Rockin' Rob Foldy. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. How's, how's everybody doing? Everything's great. Yeah. Hey, um, how, how many times is this for you on The Grid? Three? Four? four? This is your first time on the new set? First though. time on the new set. Very excited to be here. Well, we're very glad to have you here. And we have a really good topic today. Hey, before we get started, we just want to... Uh, we, you know, we have so many of our viewers that are from the UK, so many friends over there and people that we love, and we just love England just in general. And um, we just wanted to give a shout out uh, to you guys and let you know that everybody here in the States uh, sends their love and their prayers. And our, our hearts are with you. Our hearts are with you as a country. We're, our hearts are with you as people. Everyone here, too, it's, it's uh and just a, an unspeakable tra tragedy. We just want to let you know that we're we're with you and, and uh, that's it. I don't... We have a topic today. I don't, I don't know what to say. We have a topic today. It's called, uh, Can You Still Make Money in Photography? And so we've got some interesting things to talk about today. And of course, we want to hear um, your comments and stuff. So uh, please, you know, uh, we are we are having an issue with our chat, I think, today, right? So we're... Oh, so, so some of you apparently are in the chat, but Jen can't get in the chat. So, you know, and if Jen are can't get sure in the chat, what good is the chat from the chat? But yeah. if you want to jump over to my Facebook page, you can comment live there. She also monitors that one, especially since she can't monitor the other one. So go to Facebook.com slash S Kelby. So my first initial, my last name, S K E L B Y. And you can watch us live over there. And she is monitoring your comments there. So check it out. Um, couple things first i just want to give a very quick shout out to the folks in minneapolis and indianapolis who came out to my seminars on friday and tuesday just some of the nicest people so many photographers came out uh and it was it was really great we had we had a great time met a lot of great people and people are so excited about lightroom which is very very nice to see everybody like so into it so uh, that was a lot of fun so thanks to everybody that came out uh i'm um taking vacation and doing stuff this summer, but I'll be back with the tour. It hits it hard starting in August. We're going out west coast to San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Seattle, like boom, boom, boom in a week or so. So that'll be- Do you uh, go out there every time? Like, do you fly from here to like- No, no, I'm gonna stay out there like, like a for a west week. I'm doing a west coast leg, yeah. you know I am. Yeah. And uh, so that's coming up. Uh, lots of shout outs here. We got Alec from Aberdeen. Good to have you here, Alec. Uh, Bob's here from Lockport, New York. Uh, Sue Sanders says hi from LA and she says sending much love to the UK. Yep. Yes, we are. Um, Alexander uh, is here from Serbia. Serbia. Great to have you here. Well, anyway, welcome, welcome. We're happy to have you here. Uh, we've got an interesting topic today, so this will be kind of fun. Hey, I do want to mention, I don't have all the details because I'm, I'll, I hope to have a, a web link for you. But uh, next week I'm doing a, a webcast called Beginner's Breakthrough. And it is for beginners photographers. So if you're, you're like a Kelby One member, you would invite a friend. You know, everybody has a friend that is kind of just getting well, not, started. Well, not all of us have friends. You have friends. I'm your friend. So you got at least one. Will you be on the Jen, you're, you're Rob's friend. I There's do. two. That's two. That's all you really need. So uh, anyway, but it really is, this is for people who are really seriously beginners at photography. Okay. Like they're just, you know, and so uh, I, I'm trying to do this webcast and it's free, it's open to everyone. Okay. And uh, it's trying to basically kind of have that breakthrough where they realize, oh, okay, I'm not really a photographer yet. I'm, I'm just kind of taking pictures, but I want to be a photographer. Yep. So it's really how to make that jump from I have a camera okay. or I have just a cell phone into I'm making images. So that's what it's all about. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a, a link that you can give out to invite your friends uh, later in the show. Cool. Uh, we have some giveaways, of course, today. We have some in interesting giveaways today. We have some great giveaways today. I'm very personally excited about Yes, he is, because he has both of these books that we're giving away. Yes. Because you are a sports photographer. We're going to talk am. about that today as well. But uh, here's one of the ones we're giving away. This is, I have this book. I read this book cover to cover numerous times. Yep. Uh, the first day I got it, I read the whole thing like on a plane. I could not stop. Peter Reed Miller. Uh, Kelby One Instructor, yep. an incredible great photographer, photographer still and a still super, super nice guy. Yep. So uh, we're giving away that book today. And one of the best books, I think, on photography ever written, The Moment It Clicks, right there. 
Can, can, I, can I tell you a little story, backstory on this I book? I would love to hear the backstory. So my wife named this book, right? So we produced this book for Joe. Like yep. We produced it, and we did it in-house. Joe wrote it, but you know, we, we did the graphic design, the editing, the whole nine yards, yep. all done in our inside team. And so one day I'm talking to my wife about it, and we're like, you know, because I was the one that, that approached Joe about wanting to do this book. I was at a workshop, and I'm sitting there writing notes, and Joe's talking, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm writing all these little notes. And he would say things to where just like, wow, the light bulb light came on. So I'm explaining this to, to – Was it the light bulb on the roof of the Empire State Building? It was the light bulb on the roof of the Empire State Building. Thank you for adding that. Bang. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, so um, well, I'm talking to my wife. We're going back and forth. And I said, you know, I just, I don't know, you know, what to name the book. You know, Joe and I have been going back and forth and neither of us can, you know, settle on a name. And, and I said, and she goes, well, tell me how it came about. And I said, well, I'm sitting in this class and he would write these things that sometimes I like, kind of knew, but when he said it, it was just all of a sudden like the clouds cleared. And she goes, you mean like the moment it clicks? And I went, that's it. Yeah. And she's like, the moment it clicks? I go, that's it. That's the name. The moment it clicks. Because it's, it's like clicks and yeah. clicks. I said, it was perfect. So yeah. I call up Joe. I go, Joe, we got the name. And he's like very skeptical. And I go, the moment it clicks. And I explained to him. And he's like, yeah. that's it. That's the name. And that's a, it's a great name for the book. And like the way that the book's oh, formatted and, so, and like the it, way it that it explains out, everything. It worked out wonderfully well. That should be the prerequisite before people take your, yeah. your webinar. Is the, they need a, no, that book is beyond summer, my summer webinar. Reading. Oh, no, no. That book is – that's after you <laughs> – you, there's a lot to do before you get to that yeah. book. But anyway, it's a wonderful book. We're giving away both of those today. We're That's giving the a, first book give, I ever got. Really? That's like when I first got serious about photography, my first boss gave me uh, The Moment It Clicks. That was wow. like the first. That was, your boss was awesome. Yeah. We're going to give away a Platypod Max, right? This is a Max, right? Yeah. Pro Max? Pl Platypod Max. Yeah. Okay. Can I just, here's, here's our, our update, right? You know, like two weeks ago in the grid, we, did, we, we launched the Kickstarter with them. Yes. Now, we just, <laughs> I say, like, we did it with them. I got no, I have no skin in the game. Yeah. We, uh, you know, they said, hey, we're going to launch this, and they know we're fans. They're a sponsor of the show, so we are super fans, actually. So, anyway, they launched it. They were hoping to raise $20,000. Okay. They raised it in 24 hours. They are now, it's only two weeks later, they were trying to raise 20000 to okay. do the project. And if they didn't get to 20000 they wouldn't do the project. Yep. They're at 70000 Holy cow. They're at triple what they were trying to raise awesome. in like two weeks. And it runs still a few more weeks. So amazing product. Uh, but we're going to be giving away its big brother. This is for like the big daddy. So we're giving away this today as well. And a Lens Pro to go $50 gift card. So if you want to rent a lens for a weekend or a light or a flash or a whatever, right there. Lens Pro to go. We're giving all of that away today at the end of the show. One last thing and we're going to get to our topic. So Mac Fun. Mac Fun, they make plugins for Mac. Okay. They make all really photography fun. plugins, right? And and just to give you a backstory, these are some of the people that used to work at Nick. Okay. That kind of started their own thing. So it's got the like Nick engineering and marketing minds. I'm sold. You are sold. Anyway, they came out with this plugin called Luminar. Okay. Last year, like late last year, and it kind of let lit the world on fire. I saw it today. Do you know how many downloads there have been? Now it's Mac, it's Mac only on Mac. Okay. Four million downloads worldwide for a Lightroom and Photoshop plugin, and today they announced the PC version. That's incredible. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to be working on a class on it. So we'll okay. be having a class soon. I don't know when, but I think I'm taping it next week. So it will be soon on how to use it. If you haven't used Luminar, it's um, it's very nice. You will you will find it very fun and familiar, and lots of great That's great cool. stuff there. Uh, and you don't have to be a big pro to use it. They've done awesome. a brilliant job with their presets and things. I have my own set of presets. Yep, own oh, set presets. I got some presets. I got some presets. I got some presets. Nick. All right. People. Anyway, uh, got some more comments here, and then we're going to uh, get rolling. So uh, uh, Ben says, and, and I guess Ben is over in the UK. So Ben says, thanks, Scott. It's a weird time for the world. Uh, uh, for the world over, not just here in the UK. And he says, hi, once again, from Ben and Bridget in Southwell. Glad to have you guys here, Ben and Bridget. Um, uh, Michael, I guess it's Mikkel. Is, uh, <laughs> hello from Sweden. Thank you. I hope I didn't trash your name. Uh, Ian's from sunny London, born and raised in Manchester. There you go. Uh, Fred is here, says, hi from Vegas. Love the secret sauce. Uh, Michael says, good day from Sydney, Australia. Boy, we got everybody here today. All over, man. Um, You're a popular Mir guy. Miroslav says, I've got this incredible book, uh, the Joe's one as well. Any special giveaways for those who already read both? Yes. 
<laughs> it's called a platy pro We'll send it anywhere in the world. We, we so wherever you are, I just the lens pro to go. It's like a U.S. only, but you know the other stuff we'll send. And look, we have water in our grid. Let's drink that yeah. out of our grid cups. This, this. this is my first time with the grid cups as well. Mm. They're delightful. That's a courtesy of Mike Cabasi, who said, "If I see you guys drinking out of a water bottle one more time, I'll kill you." Hey, you got a water bottle. Strong on words. Oh, sorry, Mike. Michael just he'll send a note. All right, uh, Matt Trinisky here says, "Oh, well, that that's hold on. That's a question for the actual class." Um, Mark Rodriguez, the moment this it clicks water. changed my life. It is. I'm just absolutely. Kidding. Hey, Craig Henry says, um, "I rented a 600 millimeter lens from Lens Pro last week when I went to Yellowstone, and it was awesome." Yeah, man. All right. Um, Fran Hughes says, hello, everyone from Manchester, UK. Never been prouder to say that. Yeah, man. Send, sending, sending, all, sending love to all of my Mancuans. You did better than I would do. I'm for it. I'm not sure I said that right, but anyway. I got nothing. Anyway, thank you, Fran. It's good to have you here. Mancunians? Mancunians could be. I don't know. I'm really bad at pronouncing things. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to launch into our topic, which is can you still make money in photography? We would love, 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 love uh, to hear, hear your comments because um, this is a really important topic today. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people that their, their dream would be to do this, and so we're going to talk about it and give some insights. Rob has had a really, really interesting, uh, really successful year that culminated in something we'll talk about in a few minutes ago. But you've had a really great plan. Last time you were on the grid, well, when you were on the grid down in Fort Lauderdale when we broadcast live, from a rainy hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Yes, not from um, the gorgeous yacht base outside. Yeah, we, we, had, we, we did this live broadcast from Fort Lauderdale, and we'd set out in this beautiful tiki hut and yachts behind us and all this stuff, and it's right 10 minutes before air, it starts pouring rain. So we wound up in the lobby with literally... We were all by ourselves, and people would come and walk into the middle of the set. We were like, wait, I don't know what you'd have to do to find out where we were, but people found a way to walk in our set. Like, It was fun. Is this where you store your bags? We're like, <laughs> the cameras set up. Like, no, it's probably uh, not. We're going to take a short break. Rob Foldy is here. Actually, Rob Foldy's everywhere. We'll be right back. Let's drink out of our cups. So in Lightroom. <clears throat> We're working all the time doing the same things. We're editing our photos, we're organizing our photos, maybe we're printing our photos, but there's a whole ton of things in Lightroom that we don't do every day, but they're important and sometimes you need to do them, like maybe making a custom file naming template or maybe working with the history panel or using face tagging or the map module or all these other things like soft proofing and stuff that we don't get to do all the time. How are you gonna learn that stuff? I'm gonna help you. So I did a class called Everything Else in Lightroom. This is Everything Else in Lightroom part two, and I'm gonna cover all that other stuff and so much more. Come check it out, there's a ton of stuff in there. You're gonna learn a lot, and you can also, I structured the class so you can jump right to the lesson you want, watch that, and boom, you're done, or you can watch the whole darn thing. Doesn't matter, it's all here, exclusively at Kelby One. Hey guys, Christy from Shark Pixel here, and I am so super thrilled to be bringing you this fully loaded new class all on retouching eyes. All right, you are going to learn things like how to accentuate or change eye color, how to add dimension, how to open eyes in multiple different ways, and lastly, we're going to get really advanced and start adding some luscious lashes to our images to really make those eyes pop. So stay tuned and watch my new class only on KelbyOne.com. Hey, everybody. We are back. Scott Kelby here with Rob Foldy. Sup? Rob Foldy. Sup? I can't sing my own name. Yes, you can. You should always sing your own name. Sing yours. All right. Hey, look, they swapped out laptops for Jen. Really? Was it a laptop issue? I guess so. Wow. You were. I told you. IT you blocked yourself. Team swept in. And hopefully that'll be Anyway, uh, so I, I was going to show you a screen capture, and it might take me just a second to find it because I, I, I made this stupid mistake of, of sharing it from one computer from my phone uh, using um, iCloud Drive, which works 22% of the time. Uh, the photo I need to show you that sparked this whole conversation is on my phone. Man, I guess I could I could go to video control room two here, but I, I wanna I wanna do this right. 
Mm-hmm. Hey, by the way, did you see that DJI came out with a new drone today? Eyes that was all over the internet. The Spark? Yes. Dude, again, Apparently, I read that it has hand controls. I don't know what that means, but that's what I saw. I don't know. I don't know, but it looks good. Let me get. I got to get this graphic. There's the graphic. Let's see if I can get it to. I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna email it to myself. This can you is airdrop lame. it to your computer? You know what? Can I tell you something about AirDrop? It works about 45% of the time. 45% and that's percent double of the time, 22%. It, it shows up, and then it, sometimes it doesn't. It's like the most – it's the, it's the – uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Flakiest thing that Apple has ever made, like as far as like consistently doesn't work every time. I, I'm so down on it. I just – I'm like – I'm stunned at how bad it is. I just want to save this. Here, what do I want to do with it? I'm going to message it to myself. This is how sad it is. I'm messaging myself. Messaging to massive. If all right, let's see. Let's see if I actually got my own text. All right, now did it come across on my app here? Yes, it did. There it is. We're so close. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. And I'm going to show you the thing that inspired this topic today. Wait We're for it. I got to go to the video control room too, and all that. And you know that's all very complicated and everything. And she'll tell me when she gets it. She has a special secret way of doing it. She basically tells Juan and he tells me. <laughs> she got it? All right. So before I show the screen, I just want to give you a heads up. So Terry White, you know Terry. I do know Terry. How great is Terry? Terry is one of the best. He, he really is. So Terry works for Adobe Systems. So, and you know, Terry's become somewhat of an evangelist of Adobe stock. And, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about that, but uh, he did a, a class for us, a webinar for our members, a private webinar for our members. Then he did a full blown class for Kelby one. Yep. And, um, the, uh, and one of the things that happens a lot, and I don't know why this is, but if, if Terry does a talk or he does a webinar or he goes on Facebook and mentions Adobe stock, people, not, not a lot of people, but a couple of people will rush to tell you, I'm not selling my stuff for pennies. I'm not doing this. I'm, they will give you every reason why in the world they are above it. Why it lowering themselves to sell stock and how Adobe's stealing their money and all. Anyway, a buddy of his. That problem has existed long before <laughs> Adobe stock was Well, no, number was one, released. MicroStop happened a long time ago. MicroStop stock happened... 15 years ago when iStock photo kind of became mm-hmm. big and now there's a million stock you know so, so finding that battle but but to, to to do that thing like oh i'm not gonna sell I, nobody makes money that's just anyway and terry's like no there's people making real money so a buddy of his who who is by the way this is interesting is not a full-time photographer like a hobbyist he has he has no he's a good photographer but he he has a full-time job he has a full-time job and he does Stock on the side. It's not his full-time job. Okay. He sends, so, so Terry's talking to him, and, and Terry's starting to submit. You know, I think Terry has a few thousand images now on, on Adobe Stock. And he starts going, so, you know, you're making any money at this? And the guy's like, yeah, dude, I'm making some serious money. He takes a screen capture. Your screen shows you what your total, total earnings are. Okay. And he sent this to Terry, and Terry sent it to me. After Terry fell out of his chair, I fell out of a chair. Take a look on screen. So far, he made $99,811.87. That's a lot. While he sleeps. Yeah. These are, not, these are images that, you know, he, he, he literally said, I even went dark for a while and didn't, like, wasn't uploading stuff. You know, I got busy with other mm-hmm. stuff. So basically, he's uploaded them, and then he goes on with his life. Yep. Let me just say that number again. <laughs> 99,811. And people will always go in these things and go, oh, I'm not selling my stuff for, pe-. number one, it's not pennies anyway, but just to go, oh, I'm not selling my stuff. Like, and let all me that ask stuff, you, all those up. people, I, want, I would love to go, so how much money are you making selling your photos, you know? Correct. And, and, and by the way, this is the other thing, and, and he makes a good point. Like, if, so Terry does a demo and says, here's what Adobe stock is. Here's how you can join it. And here's like, and people are going, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, there's no way I'm going to let Adobe's on. No one's forcing you to do it. You don't want to do it? Take your, take your high-profile account to Getty. They would love to have you, right? Getty would be like, oh, yeah, come on over. Yeah, they just let anybody sign up for Getty accounts. So, yeah, yeah. here's, what it was, here's what, how it would go. Someone would go, you know, uh, I, I applied to Getty, and it's been two weeks, and 
I haven't heard anything. I'm surprised they found somewhere to apply. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's I, I mean, know you not right, yeah. right. So, and Alan Hess is leading up to one of the big topics here. He just, he just put something in the in the form there, so uh, we're going to read that because that'll that'll yep. lead us on to other thing. But I wanted to talk about this first because this is something that people are doing, and I don't think people realize how many people are making money out of it. Uh, and and it, it is like any other thing. The more serious you take it the more time you devote to it. Yep. If you push 20 images or 50 images up and go, well, where's my check? So his buddy has 11,000 images that he's up. Are they, let me ask you a question, Rob. May I call you Rob? Yes, you may. Do you think they're 11,000 portfolio images? No, but it was images that people apparently were looking for. Right. So a lot of the stuff that you're putting up for stock is is maybe not your bread and butter. Maybe, and, and people go, well, I'm not going to take some image I might sell to a client. Don't upload that one then. <laughs> if it's one that you might sell. And by the way, if it is one that you wind up selling, you can take it off stock. Yep. And by the way, then you know what else? If you If you do Adobe stock, you can do other stock agencies too. That's just what this guy's earned. $99,000. Eight hundred eleven dollars, and Adobe stock hasn't yeah. been around for that long. I mean, New. when did they release it? I mean, that's a couple of years. Yeah, say within a year or two. That's a lot of money in sales, and that's not a long lot of money. Of time. So anyway, uh, I, I wanted to show that because I saw it. and I'm looking on my phone. And I'm going, holy cow! I need to take this more serious. Yeah. But but it really is. It's one of those things. Is what you put into it, which just kind of leads here to what Alan Hess wrote. And, and he's absolutely right. And this was kind of the heart of, of what we say. And you, you are, the, are just the best one to talk about this. Alan says, yes, yes, you can make a living at photography. It takes a ton of work, not just the ability to take photos, but talk to clients, find work, all the business stuff. Correct. And so uh, you've been very, very successful here. Now, so for those of you who don't know Rob's backstory, um, Rob uh, is a sports photographer. And I met, I met him at a game years ago. I don't know, six, seven years ago, five years ago? Yeah, probably about that. Yeah, I'm going to say at least five years ago. Uh, he was shooting a game. You were shooting uh, as a stringer for ESPN? Yeah, ESPN was putting on the – they put on the, the college bowl football games at the end of the year, so we were there taking photos for the right. For them. And, and I ran into Rob, and Rob says, hey, I want to come on the grid. No, that's, that's <laughs> not, that's what, not what he said. No, no. Anyway, we started hanging out, and he, I, I thought he was funny and, and you know, weird looking. <laughs> Yeah, you play whatever card you can play. You play people. whatever card you can play. No, anyway, but we just kind of hit it off, and we've been friends ever since, and we've hung out and done all kinds of stuff. Anyway, but it's been he, what he what I have been interested to see is two things happen. Rob was always a good photographer, but oh my gosh, his photography has gotten so much. I don't I don't want to say so much better because it sounds like it was bad. It's just it's gotten tremendous. It has really, really, really gotten just great. I mean, he'll send me shots that now you shoot. You've been shooting for Getty now, actually, the real Getty for a couple of years now. Yeah, probably three or four years now. And he sends me shots and I'm just like, how does he do it? Like we shoot the same game sometimes together. We shoot all kinds of different sporting events together. And I, I look at it and I'm like. I mean, he, he's really that next level. Whatever level I'm at, I look up and go, there's Rob up there. Now, Rob did say something that was kind of sobering to me once. So Rob shoots all the time. Like Rob will drive. He'll drive from like Miami up to Gainesville and he'll shoot a game there. He'll go to Atlanta. He'll drive. He'll go wherever. You, I can imagine the number of miles that you put on in a year. I said a lot of Marriott's. He a does. Lot. He's he's a most most favored status with Maria. He drives everywhere, and he, and Rob's like, you know what? I used to drive. I fly now. No, you do fly. That's true. But he would be like, you know what? How often do you shoot a football game? Once every two weeks, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, dude, I shot three last weekend. I shot four in the last five days. So. It, it, the more you practice, it's just like anything else, experience and you learn things, but you have a great style and a lot of talent, which I could shoot a lot of games and I wouldn't have your style and talent. But I think one of the most impressive things is you really put together a business plan. We talked about it a little mm -hmm. last time you were on the grid. Rob said, I made X amount of money last year and I want to make this money next year. And I was like, Rob, that's a lot of money to make shooting sports. Not only did you beat that number, but you are double, almost double that this year. You're making like serious, serious money shooting sports, like crazy money. You're, you're making like Adobe stock money shooting sports. And that's, that's very, very hard to do. And it, it is what Alan said. It yeah. requires a lot of work. Well, and that was the biggest difference for me was 
the images are we're photographers, so the images are the most important thing. But making that conscious decision to take the business side seriously, just like Alan said, um, really, it just changes your mindset. It changes the way you approach going into something. And so, um, having outlined goals. Not, I mean, I had some photography goals and some career goals, but I'd never really made financial goals and had any really financial organization. So being, and that wasn't a thing that I was ever any good at. So I took the time, somebody asked about books. We're going to get to some of those in a, in a second, but you know, I read some entrepreneur books and some small business books and started asking questions and hiring people to uh, perform tasks that I wasn't good at. So I got a CPA and I got um, somebody to kind of help me keep the books and do invoicing and all that kind of stuff. Um, for all my clients and, you know, somebody to do the bookkeeping. And those were skills that I wasn't taking seriously, but needed to be taken seriously. So once I started taking the, the small business ownership side, it, w it became a game, just like the photography became a game. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards this. And then um, oh, I got the business side together. It was, okay, now I'm working towards these financial goals the same way that I'm working towards these photography goals. How important was it getting that accountant to help you? Or the bookkeeper, they were all very important for their roles. Um, and so, is it stuff that I that I could have learned how to do? I probably could have, but that would have been time that I. That was the other realization that I kind of came to was. Not only do I not know how to do this kind of thing, and so I'd have to learn how to do it, it was time-consuming. It's time-consuming to send invoices and to do expense reports and to, um, you know, balance a budget and to do P&Ls every month and to hold meetings and to all of the, the small business aspect is time that I can't be out shooting. And so I realized that the money was only coming in if I was going out and shooting. So by kind of handing off and delegating out some of those tasks, it allowed me more time to not only shoot, but then accomplish some of the other things I'd like to do in my life besides just shooting and invoicing. Right. And you also had something really big happen this year. All this was leading to you getting to something that I think a lot of sports photographers dream of is you are now the official team photographer for uh, Major League Baseball's uh, Miami Marlins. Yeah. And so they're 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 going for it, aren't they, this year? This is the year. Yeah, this is our year. No, it, it, there's a great group of guys. <laughs> this um, is our year. There's a great group of guys on the team, and, and we have some great creatives in the office. Our, our coaching staff is great. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a humbled to be part of the, the Marlins family and the Major League Baseball family, and uh, a lot of cool stuff going on this year for sure. I know the team photographer for the Marlins. He's awesome. All right. Hey, uh, Alan has this, got a great quote. He's, he's talking about the Adobe stock. He says, I love selling my stuff for pennies. Lots and lots yep. of pennies. And that's the thing. So I'm sure we're going to kind of bounce all over the place, but you don't get to that Adobe stock number that we saw um, in one or two sales. That's a lot. If you were to break that down. Yeah, he, has 11, 000, Getty, he has 11,000 images up there. Yeah. Well, but not maybe. We get a, so I don't know. I'm not on the Adobe stock side. Don't tell anybody. Sorry, Adobe. Because um, I'm on the Getty side. And hey, so man, Adobe's not listening. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> um Every month, I get a, a sales report that I can download through the, the Getty site that has all of my, every single transaction that, that came into that month's, um, you know, breakdown. And so it says, this image went to this company for this license for this much money. And a lot of them are, just like um, Alan said, a lot of them are for pennies. Um, or for, you know, our, and that's the other thing, just like Adobe, I think it's 50, 50, every, every agency that you use, you only get a percentage of the sale. So that's the other thing that breaks down. It says, okay, here's how much the image sold for. Here's your share of it. Um, and when those add up, you, sometimes you see the number, you go, wow, but then you look at 30 pages of, of sales, you know, for a month, 30 pages of sales is nice. Yeah. And that's what Alan was just saying. Like it's, it, it's not that you're selling them for pennies. It's that you're selling a lot of pennies over and over and over again, and that's where the that's where the money in stock sales comes from. All right, hey, we we uh, got some questions I want to mention. So uh, Stephanie, Stephanie Richer, who is uh, where is Stephanie today? Stephanie is in a small boat. She is rowing a small boat along the Yangtze River. No, Stephanie's always someplace exotic, but uh, she says I I'm curious to know what kind of images sell to clients. Stephanie, go watch Terry White's class. Oh, hey, look, right above Stephanie. Hey, everyone, it's Terry White. So, Terry White, hey, Terry. So, um, go watch Terry's class. Uh, Terry actually, uh, so he, he knows people at, you know, way up in Adobe stock. And they have given him insights into exactly what images sell. When he told me, I was like, 
it made so much sense. I was like, are you kidding me? And I was like, wow, it is invaluable stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. I mean, here's the guys that, that run Adobe stock going, you know what's selling? these and here's why and this is why you should submit these mm -hmm. and the psychology behind it is just amazing yep. and and yes there's parts of it that terry teaches you that you really need like um you need keywording and stuff like that but but go watch terry's class seriously and if you're not a kelby one member go take the 10-day free trial and watch it tonight it will you will be amazed i cannot tell you how many people have written us that said i took terry's class i submitted my first 100 images tonight yep. you know and 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 terry makes the point he, he's not sending in his portfolio images he's not selling the best shots he's ever done these are basically images that were sitting on his drive earning zero how much money does it make when your images just like you make your money by selling images on the wire Yes. Well, I mean, that's one way you make yes. money. You make money yep. in all kinds of ways. Because yep. you even shoot other stuff besides sports. But um, And you assist. You do all kinds of stuff, right? You spend uh, with Joey, right, doing a bunch of stuff. But how much do you earn from images that sit buried in a folder on your hard drive? Uh, there's still a lot of those sitting there, and you're not making <laughs> anything. So right. yeah, the faster you can get those um, out, of the, out of your camera, on your computer, toned up, and, and out there, the faster. Um, I mean, for me, it was a lot of... To, to kind of go back around to that uh, that question that was just asked about what kind of images to sell, Terry White's class, great stuff. Um, I just track those image reports. I'm, not, I'm not sure Adobe has something that you know you can see which images are being downloaded for how much. Do they email you every day? Terry wakes up in the morning. Yep. That's and right, there's right. all these that. emails that go, you sold this, you sold this. And every once in a while, Terry sends me one. He sent me one that just cracked me up. He took a picture. He's like in, in line at like Chick-fil-A and it's raining, right? He has a sunroof in his car. <laughs> of course he does. Uh, anyway, so he, he, it takes a picture of the raindrops on the roof. And then he sends me a picture and he sold it. And it said, uh, you know, I, I love when you get an email telling you you made money from the picture you took in the Chick-fil-A line. <laughs> it was like, wow. Hey, um, Kelby One Instructor, uh, excuse me, Photoshop World Instructor, <gasps> Victoria Pavlov says, I love Adobe Stock. I'm a contributor and a subscriber as well. And hey, uh, Josh Berlin says, what's up, Rob? Fellow Miami up, Dolphin Josh? sideline staff. You met Josh. Yes, I did meet yeah. Josh. Awesome, awesome guy. I tell you what, that is the greatest group of guys down there with the Dolphins. They seriously, are awesome. yeah. seriously great. Um, Let's see what else we got. Uh, Paul says, when are you coming back to Sydney? We miss you down here. Paul, I would come to Sydney tomorrow. Just need somebody to invite me to Sydney. You know, it's like a Adobe or something. Oh, I mean, I, like, I need like to, I have a legitimate reason to go. Because I don't know if you know, airfare from here to, to Sydney, Sydney is like, I would have to start selling Adobe stock. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Artist First says, um, Terry's class is awesome. And with an exclamation point. There you go. Um, so uh, Fran says, I heard making money in photography is 25% shooting and 75% business. Am I right? It might be more like 10% shooting and 90% and business. Uh, that's the one I've heard. Am I right? So much more goes into making money from photography. Can, can I give you guys an example? So years and years ago, I used to be the marketing guy for a martial arts organization. So before I ever started in this, in fact, the reason I came up with the idea to do an association because I was doing a martial arts marketing for a martial arts guy who was a friend of mine that ran this great, great association for martial artists. The reason, and so what, what we did was every month we would design ads for martial arts studios. They were completely designed. All you did was put your logo and your phone number in it. And we, there was all these things about marketing and videos and all this kind of stuff, right? And so my job was to design the ads. That was part of my job was to design the ads that went out every month. Do you know why that martial arts artists need an association to help them advertise? Because they, they are in love with the art. They're great martial artists, like great photographers. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're not necessarily, as a whole, very good at the business side of it. Martial arts studios open in your town, and then six months later, they're gone, or a year later, they're gone. They open and close, open and close, open. You see them all over the place. And that's because you have uh, someone that goes through the program, they become a black belt, they're really good. They get their second degree. They start teaching at that school. Then they go off and they open their other school. Not because they're great business minds, because they know how to teach kids, right? They know how to teach adults and they love martial arts, Yep. right? That's like we are as photographers. We love photography and our dream is to make our living doing something that we love. We love photography, but, but it's that business side that sinks a lot of ships. That's really, really does. 
Uh, well, we've got some more comments here. So uh, Adult and Ham says, uh, Scott and Rob, it's just like anything worth having. It takes hard work and practice. A doctor, lawyer, athlete, they just don't wake up and say, hey, I'm going to make a lot of money doing X yep. without working at it. Correct. Boy, that, and that is, that is a great, great that is a great thing. You know what? It's though, I will say this. I, I think it's, it is tough to make a living. Now, you see Alan Hess talking about it. Alan Hess talks about how hard he works and all this stuff. Yeah. Alan Hess is very established. Mm -hmm. Like he's the house shooter at a big concert hall in San Diego. And Alan has been doing this for a long, long time. If you're not established, it is very hard today to become established because everybody's a photographer. How do you stay? It really, it, it is, it is tougher today you absolutely have to have what rob's talking about the business side of it and that's the that's the that's step one yeah i mean it's definitely a job like don't it's when you're when we talk about making money for photography when when you start committing to okay i'm going to take the small business side seriously it's definitely a lot more work so it's not like, oh, I'm going to add this stuff and I'm not going to feel any of the effects of it. No, it's a lot more stuff to stay on top of. You're going to add all of your photography shooting work and then you add that on top to all the business work and the invoicing and the marketing and the strategic things and the business plans and all of those. I mean, that, that, those are time consuming. Um, so it definitely makes it feel more like a, more like a day job, but it's, it's worth it because at the end of the day, you're going to have to do that work in any other line of work that you get into. So you might as well do it for yourself and you might as well have it support your passion. Absolutely. You know, we always, we always make this joke, Rob, that the dream is to make enough money to pay for your equipment. Yeah. That's step absolutely. one. But you know what happens? It's just like anything else. Um, it, if you make enough money to pay for your equipment, the next thing you want to do is say, well, now I'd like to make a little. I extra want a money. little bit more equipment. Yeah, yep. because, and that's just it's that's just how they nature. That's how they sucker you in. That's they how go. they get you. They pull you out. Um, Thanks for switching Rich, back to that. Rich says, "I'm interested to hear what you guys have uh, for thoughts on this. Uh, I shot with a local juniors hockey team this year, and I learned a ton, but I didn't make any money doing it. Now that I have a season of experience, I would like to know if I can make money doing it again next year, this season. You know, Rich, one, I would say that there are still people making money." in sports photography, but man, is it hard. Can I tell you something Dave Black told me? So first off, you, you know, getting someone to pay you for sports photography is like getting someone to pay you for concert photography. It's really, really tough because now I remember going to a, an Atlanta Braves game and, uh, and I was shooting with the Braves and I, and I went up in the stands with a team photographer. We were going to shoot and there are people there with like 300 millimeter lenses, 400 millimeter lenses shooting from the stands and a guy was passing out his business card to fans going hey if you want some shots from today's game here they are now he's which not, is totally illegal it's totally illegal but who's up there policing it in the stands of a braves game on a thursday afternoon right nobody so and i'm, I'm not i'm not saying you should do it i'm just saying that that stuff happens actually more than you'd think uh same thing with concert photography you have all these people out there i mean even look how good phones are if you're in the first few rows you can get amazing shots you don't need a flash you don't need any other gear the stage already has 1200 lights on it doesn't need one more um but th this is this is a sticky thing with, with 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 sports and and how do you move from from you know I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job to getting paid. And I'll, I have a lot of people ask me, how do you get credentials to a game? There's a, there's a long, it's hard to get credentials anymore. And then it's even harder to get someone to pay you to be there. It really is, it's sticky. What advice would you have for people like, like the gentleman that just asked the question? Um, it, it depends. You just got to think outside the box. So you're going to, you have to say, okay, I want to make money doing this. And then one of the things Joel Grimes talks about, because he does commercial photography is, you got to see where the money is. So see if you're shooting, I think you said youth hockey, like see, well, if you want to get paid, who's going to pay you? Do you think the team's going to pay you? Do you think the other parents are going to pay you to take pictures of their, their children playing? Um, do you That's think a that, good question right there. there. A, is there who's going to pay you? Is there a sponsor that, you know, maybe makes the jerseys or the skates or the pads that would pay you to take pictures for them? Can we stop right there? That's who you want. If you want to make money in sports photography, don't shoot editorial. Go, you got to find well, a sponsor. Well, well, no, no, not that you can't. I'm just trying to say, what is the what is the fastest way? Look at Dave Black. 
They Black doesn't shoot editorial any, um, editorial no, no, anymore. No, yeah, once you get to commercial. If that's... you can get to commercial, the money is 10 times what you'll make uh, shooting editorial. But you, that being said, you have to be established to get those commercial gigs. You can't exactly. just jump off the street and, and start shooting for and you know what? Under Armour you, or you, Nike. Right. You have to shoot, basically, you have to shoot the editorial first to get the commercial. Lindsay that's the Adler, way a lot of people Lindsay do Lindsay Adler says the same thing. She goes, you get paid nothing for fashion editorial. Why do you do fashion editorial? Because you want a commercial photographer to go, I saw your spread in L. I'd like to hire you for my campaign. Yep. And then you get paid. Yep. Uh, Dave Black had a great thing he said to me, and you will so uh, uh, relate to this, and so will the gentleman that asked the question there a moment ago, which was, Dave Black says, so you're in the end zone. You have a Canon 400 f2.8. The guy next to you has a 400 F2.8. The guy next to you, the guy next to you, the guy next to you. Every single person either has a 200 to 400 or a 400 F2.8. You're all on your knees in a row. What are, what are, what are you going to get that's going to make you more valuable than this guy and this guy and this guy? And you know what Dave said? One of his funny lines was, you should be the one with a 600. He goes, you, everybody shoots the same in, gear. That's in that Joe McNally book, by the way. That's in the Joe McNally well. book? That story? Yeah. Well, a, a, similar a, similar story. Story a similar story about story. if yeah. everybody has that, you shoot something longer. Right. But but so what? you kind of have to do the editorial to yeah. get to the commercial. Yeah. But would you, when you said, you know, shoot for the sponsor, man, the bells went off. I'm like, yep. that's that's where the money is. But how do you get to that? So let's go back to his question, though. So he's shooting hockey, youth hockey. How does he, how does he get... Start listing the people that could pay him. Well, I mean, I think we just talked about a little bit that. So, you know, if you want to make a little bit of money, maybe show, um, make a couple of prints of stuff you shot last year. Maybe have it, you know, put together. I'm a marketing guy now, so make it a book. Say, yeah, or put together some, yeah, a book or a, a background or some sort of display, some sort of uh, way that you can showcase your pri pre pri or previous work, and say, hey, this is, um, you know, I'll shoot your kid. Um, yeah. I think uh, the people that I've never done this, but the people that I know that do it, you kind of shoot the pictures first. It's a little bit backwards. So maybe you shoot the pictures. I know people used to have uh, printers on site where you'd shoot the picture, you'd go in there, yeah. you'd edit it, and, and then you'd run up to the parent in the stands and say, hey, I have this picture of your kid, uh, 20 bucks. That's the kind of old school, you know, pound in the pavement kind of way to do it. Um, obviously, now in the digital social media age, maybe you can sell them a digital file. You can ask hey, them. Hey, can we read Matt's they, thing? Matt's got a good thing right here. Go ahead and okay. read Matt's. Uh, I have nieces in youth soccer leagues uh, in a well-off area of town. I took pictures of my niece and her soccer stuff with a sweet lighting step. Then I had my sister share those pages uh, in the league parents' Facebook group. It's generated so much business. So talking back to what Dave was saying, do something different. So do something they can't do. And by adding adding a little bit of lighting, that takes it to a next level, and that takes it something that mom with her iPhone or somebody with their you know, DSLR, hey, dude, I'm they're a not going to be able to do that if you had lights. I'm a parent. Kids will buy, uh, parents will buy pictures yep. of their kids all day long. Now, in your yep. case, you'll buy pictures of your dog. Yeah. But your dog's very photogenic. I take a lot of pictures of my dog, so I don't really you have do. to buy them. You're I do sometimes buy pictures of other dogs on Adobe Stock to make him jealous. I hang him up around the house. <laughs> I lay one, I, I'll print one out like an 8x10, put it in his bed. Wow. That's the meanest thing I've ever heard. That's just mean. It's just, it's just mean. Um, let's see what we got. So Stephanie asks, Scott and Rob, do you think photographers have to be more specialists, like, like so many careers, on focusing on one type of photography, like, for example, wedding photography? Your thoughts? I think absolutely. I think that's a, it's talked about in a lot of Kelby One classes, a lot of blogs, a lot of other places that, um, Specialize. I mean, if you want to make money, if you want to shoot, and, and we've talked about before, there's a lot of things that sometimes as a photographer you may shoot, um, but you don't want to showcase on your website or you want to maybe keep those things separate um, because you don't want to hire the guy, oh, he shoots this and this and this and this and this because, like, well, which one is he good at, you know? That's, I mean, it's, it's something I've, I've read and yeah. I've heard a lot. Yeah, you've heard me you... talk about that as well. Exactly. Like on my tour, I talked yep. about why specializing is important. Especially if they're all over the place. So this guy shoots, you know, landscapes and couples. And underwater and, shots. Yeah, it's pets. like, well, what, which guy is going to show up when I hire him, you know? <laughs> yep. Hey, we're going to take a short break because I just feel like it's break time. Oh, my gosh, we're almost out of time. Oh, my gosh. So um, we got to – I'm just stunned here. We have some comments and questions. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to uh, we're going to talk a few minutes, and then we're going to say goodbye. It's just like that. That's how it goes. Oh, no. We'll squeeze everything in. Don't go away. 
Hey, Rick Salmon here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you can really check out my latest class here, my 14th class here on Kelby One. It's called 20 Time Proven Rules of Composition. Now, before you write me the email, oh, Rick, there are no rules. That's true. These are really recommendations. You'll learn how to break the rules. You'll also learn about some of my photo philosophies. But when it comes down to it, remember that composition really is the strongest way of seeing. So again, I hope you enjoy the class. I'm Rick Salmon. I'll see you online. When you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere. One that is adaptable to any situation. That will prove versatile enough for any shoot. And is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further. Platypod Ultra does it all. Platypod Ultra, now on Kickstarter. Hi, I'm Steve Hansen, photographer and director. My transition from chef to photographer started when I was a private chef. I googled photography training and up came Kelby One. Learned about how to use a strobe, how to run your business. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. That first step for me was Kelby One. Hey, Jen, can you scroll up? No, no, don't, not Jen. Oh. Meredith. Meredith. All right. Oh, this hey, real, just real quick. Hey, uh, we're back. We're, me and, and Rob's here too. Wow. Hey, I, I got a new class coming out tomorrow. Got a new class. It's coming, coming out tomorrow. tomorrow. You know what it's called? So my, my most popular class of the year has been just one flash. So it was a whole class starting from scratch on how to just use one flash. You know what tomorrow's class wait, is? It's wait, called? Wait, wait, wait. It's called just one more flash. No! Really? That's what it's called? <laughs> Jen's about to fall out of her chair. I knew it was coming, so it doesn't bother me. I didn't know it was coming. No, don't do it this way. Do it that way. Do it towards Jen. Anyway, so I have a new class coming out tomorrow. It's called Just One More Flash. So if you, if you watched my Just One Flash class, then you're ready for adding a second flash. But that's all I'm doing. Is I'm not adding a freaking third flash. Joe going to do a that's class? Too many flashes. More flashes? Joe's, just, we just, got so many classes just with six Joe more using flashes. like nine more flashes. Like Joe's got, he's like the flash unicorn. I'm, I'm like two and I'm like, ah, eh, maybe three, but nah. Anyway, but it's, it's a very in-depth class. And I talk about everything from like lighting backgrounds to kicker lights to hair lights yep. to all the different things we do with multiple lights. Uh, we do some of it uh, in the studio. We do some of it on location and it's, and you'll see the whole thing. So that comes out tomorrow. Last week, if you missed it, uh, the wonderful Dave Clayton uh, did a class called we'll Photoshop for Social Media. He's Dude, is great. he the best? He's awesome. Who's better, Terry White or Dave Clayton? You can't tell. They're both perfect people. Perfect, Scott? They're perfect people. They're perfect people. Okay. There's like... We're going to go with that. Yeah, they're, they're perfect people. Um, so anyway, those are coming up. Also, you know something cool we did? We had our first uh, Kelby One Members Challenge this week. Okay. So we have this blog called the Kelby One Insider Blog, and it's just a blog... Uh, about Kelby One, so they can, you know, members can learn about, you know, benefits and discounts and deals and things that we've arranged for them. Where we can, we feature members, we do all this different stuff. But we started this new members challenge, and uh, you get a T-shirt. Like if you win the challenge, you Wait, get I rose I'm to the challenge kind of thing. You had me at T-shirt. It's a really cool T-shirt too. So anyway, but we had our first winner. We're gonna announce it tomorrow on the Kelby uh, Kelby uh, Insider blog. So if you're a member, go click on the you know Insider blog. That's it. So uh, that's kind of cool. Hey, D, J D. Smith, D. Johnson Smith says, I love my Kelby One membership. Thank you, D. That's very kind of you to say. And Lisa said something very nice. She said, wow, my favorite travel and favorite sports photographers. It's a good day. Oh, I don't Thank shoot you. a lot of travel, Lisa. Sorry. That was good. I see what you did there. That's good. That's very good. No, thank you, Lisa. Uh, uh, Anders says, uh, I have the Platypod Max, which we're giving away here in just a moment, uh, since a year now. 
awesome. Bought the smaller version a week ago, the Kickstarter one. Uh, I will no longer carry my tripod. What an amazing product. I'm getting the new smaller version from Kickstarter. Best kit I've bought for a long time. Yeah, you know what? People fall in love with these. Oh, I have one. This it's is the, the best. Be aren't yeah, they? They're, they're awesome. the best designed and slickest. And we're giving one away here in just like five minutes. Um, want to talk. There's some good comments here that I wanted to mention. I, I got to mention this one from Paul. Uh, Paul says, I would love to give the platypus a try with my low down car shots. Now, I've never shot with an actual platypus, but I can tell you that if you start a car engine around a platypus, they run. Yeah, that would probably be difficult. Maybe if the car's off. Um, yeah, they do not. You turn like the engine a, on and a wide lens like the platypus. Platypuses are surprisingly skittish around car shoots. If you'd like to try a platypod, <laughs> we'll be maybe maybe you'll win one in just a minute. Who knows? All right. Um, Can I answer that Matt's question up top? I was just going to say Matt. Matt's got a question. Matt. Uh, uh, Matt asks, what do you recommend to manage the client lifestyle program like 17 Hats or HoneyBook? Can you say um, that like at a speed that I can understand? Yeah, I have a minute. All right. What do you recommend to manage the client lifestyle? Any programs like 17 Hats or HoneyBook? And those are two, um, I think they do similar things. I was actually just having this uh, conversation with my cousin over the weekend. She's a wedding photographer in Nashville, and she's, I think, going to start using HoneyBook. What do you but use? I use 17 Hats. So I use QuickBooks for a while, um, and then Brad Moore uh, started using 17 Hats, and Recommended I give it a try, and we switched this year. I met uh, the 17 Hats people out at uh, WPPI in Vegas, and they yeah. were great people, great company. Um, and it does everything that QuickBooks did, at least the practical sides of QuickBooks that I use, and then added a bunch of client services. It, it will uh, automatically send follow-up emails uh it, so it can you can have a client contact you through your website it sends an automatic follow-up if you send it in if you send an invoice and the invoice is left unpaid it'll send an automatic it just it's a it's it works towards that business efficiency that if you're running a small business you really appreciate all the tools so um highly recommended you're going to need something to keep track of your bookkeeping so like i said i was using yeah. books 17 hats about the same price and it adds so many more features and it's a little bit more user-friendly and pretty and hip so, yeah, strongly recommend 17 right. Hats. One of our favorites, Loopy Bridget, says we're going to have to send rain ponchos for Jen when Rob is on the show. <laughs> Rob, are you, are you thirsty? No. no. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Matt's got another question, and, and this is uh, – I'm going I have a great answer for you here, Matt. Uh, Matt says, uh, question for Scott and Rob. What are, your, what are some of your favorite non-photography – Blogs, podcasts, books that you'd recommend to help with the business end. So I've got a few, Matt, that I, that I absolutely love. My all-time favorite, favorite business book, The Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Okay. It is, you'll read it in 40 minutes. It is just phenomenal. Really, really great. Uh, that's number one. Number two is I would go to Seth Godin's blog. Seth writes a marketing blog, and like oftentimes if I miss it, Kaliba reads it as well, and she just yesterday afforded me a great article from Seth. He is, I think, one of the best marketing minds really anywhere. Uh, really, really great, insightful stuff. Uh, also, uh, Free Prize Inside is a terrific book. Um, anything from Guy Kawasaki. Guy Kawasaki is a great business writer. Uh, really, really great stuff. There's a couple and, books, I, if I can jump oh, in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a book called Start With Why and another book called The 4-Hour Workweek. Um, those are two that I recommend as well. I had one thing, one more. Oh it's, oh, it's called The One Thing. Okay. And I can't tell you who it's by because I, as soon as I, read, I, I learned that one thing, I forgot who he was. No, but it's Obviously called the, the one, one thing, thing wasn't his name. It's one of the best books I've read in a couple of years on business. Really, really wonderful. Uh, let's see what else we got here, real quick. Um, Lori, Lori says making the switch yep. to the biz mindset is not easy. Fear, yeah, it is. Uh, you're not wrong, but you you just kind of got to do it. Um, if you want to make money at photography, you you have to learn to embrace the business side. It's not easy. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's not something that we enjoy doing, but you you just have to. All right. Uh, Jeff May says, and this is really good. Coming in from the other side of the stock art discussion, I buy several images a month from stock sites, and you would be surprised at what kind of images I often buy. Houses, cars, textures, and much more. These are images that most photographers can take, uh, can take without much expense. Uh, Jeff, do you know what I buy a ton of on Adobe Stock? Because I'm an Adobe Stock subscriber. I buy from them. You know what I buy? textures background textures i buy i bet i have a hundred background textures that i bought 
uh, and that are they're inexpensive. Um, I buy all kinds of stuff for my blog, for Facebook posts, you know, for things like that. Uh, that's where I mean, a lot of people are buying micro stock for for literally for Facebook and for social and for Twitter and stuff uh, all day. Uh, and let's say, oh, also, uh, I do want to mention uh, something just real quick here because we got to wrap up. Uh, real quick. I want to add one more thing. So oh, please do. Go, go. No, you can add right now. now? Okay. Add now. Uh, real quick. The topic of this was to how do you make money in photography? And I want to talk, uh, talk on two different things. As photographers, we get paid one of two different ways. We either get paid for a job and mm -hmm. we get paid up front. Uh, let's maybe call that a stringer rate to use the editorial term. So we're going to give you X number of dollars. You're going to turn in X number of images, end of transaction. On the stock side, that's more residual income, right? So that's, you do the job and maybe you don't get paid anything up front, you just get a percentage of sales, or maybe it's some sort of hybrid of, of both. There's a little bit of money up front and then the rest of it is in sales. As a business person, you want the latter. Because if you are a stringer, to use that word, you only get paid when you work. That means there's a, you have to work to get paid. I mean, it sounds basic, but that's, that means you have to go do something. If you do the work once and then other people pay you over and over and over again, it's passive income. You don't have to, like you, like you were saying that the, uh, the emails come in the morning from Adobe Stock, like you just made money while you slept. Right. And so that passive is- Passive income is awesome. That's the way, you know, that's as we started digging into the small business and, and as I learned more on how to run an efficient business, that is the type of income, exactly the type of income that you want to search out because unlimited growth uh, potential with less upfront effort. All right. Hey, I uh, just also want to uh, just wrap up with a couple of last things. Uh, Lisette says, I've been watching Kelby One all day. I love that you can go to specific spots and classes and pick up exactly what you need when you need it. Thank you, Lisette. And by the way, anybody that writes anything great about Kelby One will always get their comment read. So yay for that. Um, we have a lot of cool things going on at Kelby One right now. I do want to mention, I mentioned last week we have a brand new app. And uh, so the, the app is really a beautiful magazine reader, right, for... Lightroom and uh, excuse me, Lightroom magazine. By the way, since last week when I mentioned it, Chris, the managing editor, went back and has all of the issues of Lightroom back to issue one. That's, As he went back, all, awesome. they're all in the app. That's cool. And we have three years of Photoshop user magazine bash, back issues in there. If you're a member, go download Kelby One Mags from either Google Play if you're on Android or the App Store if you're on iOS. Uh, it's a free app for Kelby One members. Sign in with your membership. It's on the cloud. Scott's favorite. It's on the cloud. Also, don't forget, uh, if you get the app and you're a Kelby One member, uh, there is a direct link to our online community. Every time a class comes out, we have a discussion for that class. But once you're done with discussing that class, there is a whole community of people around the world and it's an incredibly yep. helpful and supportive community. It's literally members helping and members. And the instructors are in there. I think they went Yeah, the instructors are in there, yeah. It's, stuff, it is so. really, really awesome. Yep. Uh, and also, we just want to give out a, a, a shout out to Mark who has his three month old son on his laptop That's awesome. watching also. You know, back in the day, I used to have my son, Jordan, who's now like 20, but he used to be on my lap and I would show him a picture of Rob Foldy and he would go, he would go, Daddy, Daddy. No, not Daddy. Daddy. And no, that's not, that's Rob Foldy. Now, when my son was small enough to be on my lap, Rob was minus six. <laughs> I'm crunching those numbers. I'm oh, like, Dave Clayton just true. joined us. He goes, it's Rob Foldy. Sorry I'm late. Oh, Hi, we, are, oh we, we were talking a bunch about of terrible earlier. things about you. We didn't say it no, wasn't Dave, good. Not terrible. Don't rewind we this episode, Dave. Dave. You will be embarrassed. It was terrible. Oh, look, you, you tell people that all I have to do is say good things about Kelby One. Hey, the and awesome the Ross Chevalier is an awesome, awesome guy. I got to meet him in person at Photoshop World. Really smart, really great guy. He says, Kelby One is great. Oh, now, every, now everyone's saying it. <laughs> Brian says, oh, I love the Kelby One glasses. Well, now you say it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for today. Rob, thank you very much for being thank on the you show. For having it is always it so much awesome. fun to have you on here. You're a great guy and, and wonderful photographer. Where can people go learn more about and see? I want them to see some of your stuff. Where can they go? I have a website, robfoldyphotography.com. Oh, look, it's on the screen. Ah, you people are oh, so on take top a, of it. Oh, man. Hey, that's Mayor in the booth. She's it. She's the bomb. On it. Uh, I have the Instagrams at Ooh, Rob Ooh, you're Foldy. on the Grams? The Twitter is at Rob Foldy as well. Um, We're going over to Instagram here. Look at that. Oh, look. Uh, pictures of, uh, oh, it's raining today. There you go. There's me. There's the cleats. 
Baseball. Lots of baseball this time of year. Lots and lots of baseball. Lots some other and stuff. lots of baseball. I'm trying to sneak in other sports, too. Hey, Bruce Williams says, I downloaded the app and it works great. I was in the mountains over the weekend. I had two courses available to watch. Awesome. Thank you, Bruce. That is one of my favorite uh, features that you guys added was the ability to watch courses online. Very, very clutch. Anyway, Rob, thank you again for being here. And also thanks to my crew in-house here. Jen in the moderation. Wani on all of the cameras simultaneously from everywhere. Meredith in the booth. Ron helping with the streaming. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to all of our viewers. And again, a heartfelt uh, our prayers are with our friends from the UK. All of our great friends over there. Uh, we, we wish you guys the very best. And we, of course, will our prayers and our thoughts and our hearts are with you all. Absolutely. Have a great one. And we'll see you guys next week right here on The Grid. Take see care. You. Rob Foldy. That's Rob Foldy. <laughs>